<laughs> Alrighty. So on Tuesday, Blizz had a dev live stream, and it wasn't the normal Q&A, but was just about half an hour of Ian kind of announcing the new 8.1 patch, Tides of Vengeance. He touched on the continuation of the war campaign as we fight it out while there are absolutely zero old god things happening whatsoever. We will be receiving a new piece of content called Incursions, and it will probably feel pretty familiar since they were compared to Legion invasions, but with the added bonus of it being the Alliance or the Horde attacking each other directly. This will also add new world quests, which if it means I actually have to leave Kul Tiras or Zandalar to do them, then I'm actually fine with that, provided they hook us up with a sweet portal or some such to get us there, because making the whole world feel alive does not mean that I'm okay with more travel time, especially to just do more world quests. He also mentioned that we will see the next chapter in the storyline of Lord Sarfang, Tyrande, Malfurion, and um, as he put it, what is everyone's favorite urn up to? Now, in some actually great news, Blizzard seems to be listening to the call for heritage armor for existing races, which is awesome. So uh, let's, you know, let's look. Let's see what awesome armor we're getting. Oh, they're only rolling a couple of races out at a time. That's fine, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be cool. Wow, Horde, look at this. The Blood Elves are first for you guys. I mean, that's awesome. They're the epitome of Horde transmog and visual appeal. Now, I bet that the Alliance get that awesome Sentinel armor that we saw at the Dark Shore for the Night Elves and... W Wait, what? Oh. They're getting dwarves first? Don't get me wrong, it's cool armor, but if you think that I have a single non-dark iron dwarf character, you are wrong. Luckily, there's no major rep grind, and the armor quest will be unlocked if you have a character of that race at max level and are exalted with their faction. In other revenge type news, the next war front to grace our playtime is the War of the Th uh hmm. I mean the battle for Darkshore. This Warfront will have a Night Elf versus Forsaken theme, meaning new structures and such that are focused more towards those two races. The Alliance will start as the contributors to this Warfront, and Darkshore will be updated just like Arathi was. We're also getting new Island Expedition stuff, and I was super excited to hear this news because we've all definitely been keeping up with those and not ignoring them in the slightest. However, there is a silver lining, as Ian mentioned that they want to have the mobs clumped together instead of just slewing across the whole map. So you can go on a uh what's the word i'm looking for oh uh expedition we will also be receiving more events and enemies including the holdout and azurite extraction events now the azurite extraction event is something that you kind of set up and then defend i'm not exactly sure what the holdouts are uh they seem pretty self-explanatory with the word holdout but we'll be getting more information soon since everything in existence is being data mined right now but on a more exciting note ian announced not one but two count them two new raids for the upcoming patch. This includes the Siege of Zoldazar, and no, I will not be grabbing at the Siege of Orgrimmar low-hanging fruit, but I will acknowledge that it is there. What's cool about this one is that the Horde and the Alliance will actually have a, for the most part, different experience with the raid. Alliance will enter the dock and attempt to fight their way to the top of the temple while the Horde start in the jungles to the north of the city and try to beat the Alliance back to the dock. And once the raid is done, when you go back to your city, there will be scouts that you can talk to to experience the other three bosses, making nine bosses in total for both sides. And the second raid, named the Crucible of Storms, will explore the old god stuff in Stormsong, which is good because it means that we are finally acknowledging out loud and to everybody that there is terrible world-ending shit going on there. But this won't be coming until later after the siege raid. And Reputation Hunters can feel good again because Ian finished his announcement by letting us know that 8.1 will come with a slew of reputation changes. The Champions of Azeroth rep will unlock all the heart levels it can as soon as a character hits 120, provided that you have at least one character that is revered, and progress towards the overall exalted rep achievements are also becoming account-wide. Then, oh boy, remember the Zandalari and Kul Tiran allied races? Well, Ian blue-balled us by mentioning them and then immediately telling us that we're not getting them right away in 8.1. Apparently, it is the Siege Raid that will truly bond those races to our faction, and everyone will sit and hug and sing Kumbaya by the fires of Zoldazar. But we won't have to grind rep for these because you just either have to be exalted with the Proudmore Admiralty or the Zandalari Empire. Now, personally, I think that these announcements were a good thing for the most part. I'm still ultimately skeptical of how it'll pan out, but I'm glad I won't have to wait as long as I thought for the grand scheme to shake out. But how are you guys feeling about these? Do these announcements make you feel any better about the state of WoW? Or are you still kind of skeptical like me? Let me know, and I will see you guys next time with the second part of the Eldir video. Oh, and I'm going to flash on the screen some of the cool stuff that is being data mined right now. I wanted to make some of these part of the main video, but stuff is just coming out way too fast. But I mean, good lord, would you look at the eyeballs on those night elves.